What is Marxism? Isn't that just the same thing as communism? Or socialism? Maybe? Well, thankfully, you don't need to worry about questions like these because you've already watched the previous episodes of this series which explain those terms. And you know that socialism and communism are stages of historical development which come after feudalism and capitalism. And since you've been studiously following this series, you've already been learning Marxist theory. From understanding modes of production, to property, to social classes, and everything else covered thus far. Give yourself a pat on the back, you're killing it. But it's the seventh episode in, and we still haven't defined what Marxism actually is. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Welcome to Socialism 101, a series designed to help educate people with no prior knowledge on the basics of socialism and communism from an explicitly Marxist-Leninist and Marxist-Leninist Maoist perspective with short and easily digestible videos. If this sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell below. Please share this around on social media as the YouTube algorithm is thoroughly fecking me over at the moment. Now, Marxism is a tricky thing to define because there are so many different facets to it that no one single short definition will ever be sufficient. So the purpose of this video is not to provide one perfect definition, but rather to briefly introduce some of the major Marxist concepts and provide a basic backdrop so that we can dive into each of these individually in much greater detail in later videos. Marxism on one hand refers simply to a body of thought, the political and economic theories of Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. On the other hand, Marxism is an all-encompassing worldview, an ever-expanding theoretical toolbox that empowers us to look behind the curtains, unveiling the hidden processes which have given rise to all that we see before us and to consequently more deeply understand the very nature of reality itself. But, let's be honest, this explanation conceals more than it reveals. And that's not good enough because one of the main purposes of Marxism is to demystify and to help us see clearly. However, Marxism isn't just another philosophy, despite regular claims to the contrary. Where philosophy seeks only to analyse and understand, Marxism is a scientific theory that generates revolution and propels society forward to its next historical stage. But long before we arrive at the inevitable conclusion of the working class rising up to overthrow the capitalists who've been robbing us of the surplus value that we've generated through our labour, which they call their profits, we need to understand that Marxism is, at its most basic level, simply a method of analysis. This method is rooted in what's called dialectical materialism. Dialectical materialism consists of two components, dialectics and materialism. Dialectics is the analysis of contradictions, or conflicting opposing forces, and how these contradictions drive change. Materialism refers to where our analysis begins, with matter, atoms, scientifically verifiable concrete material reality. This is opposed to beginning with ideas, or religious or spiritual notions. Knowledge isn't handed down from the heavens, but rather built up from the ground. The application of dialectical materialism to world history and societal development is called historical materialism. Now, when Marxists talk about Marxism, at its core, this is the method that we're generally referring to, historical materialism. Through this method, we can understand that the contradictions within societies, and more precisely the class contradictions, become the motor for social historical transformation. Arising from these class contradictions is class struggle, and it's this conflict which propelled us from slave society to feudalism, from feudalism to capitalism, and what gets us from capitalism to socialism. A modern example of class contradiction would be between the working class or proletariat and the capitalist class or bourgeoisie. The working class generates value through their labour, while the capitalists appropriate a large portion of that value created. What capitalists call their profits is really just stolen surplus value that workers have generated. Capitalists seek to extract as much surplus value from workers as possible, while workers seek to end this exploitation and receive the full value created by their labour. This is a contradiction inherent to the capitalist system that can only be resolved by moving towards the next stage of social historical development, socialism. How do we get to socialism? The same way we got from feudalism to capitalism, the only way that's ever successfully progressed society from one system to the next the revolutionary overthrow of the exploiters by the exploited, thus resolving the class contradiction between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, propelling history forward to its next stage. 
There's a lot to unpack in what's just been said, but don't worry because we're going to flesh this all out a lot more in the next video, which is going to be dedicated specifically to dialectical and historical materialism. Now beyond the core of dialectical and historical materialism upon which everything else is built, Marxism can also refer to a number of other concepts developed by Marx and Engels, most notably including the Marxist law of value, which, to oversimplify, reveals that the value of a commodity, manifested in its exchange value as opposed to its use value, is determined by the socially necessary labour time that it takes to produce it. Basin superstructure, which revealed the way in which the economic base of a society, in our case the capitalist mode of production, gives rise to the superstructure of society which then in turn helps to reinforce that base. Examples of the superstructure would include things like the state and other political structures, the law, the media, art, the education system, religious institutions and even ideologies themselves, which all help to reinforce that economic base which in turn reinforces the superstructure and so on and so forth. Commodity fetishism, which reveals the way in which the commodities that we encounter on the market mystify us and obscure the real human relations which were involved in the creation of these commodities. For example, it's often nearly impossible for us to know the workers in the sweatshops and the conditions under which the products we encounter on the market have been created. Thus, the real social relations between people ourselves are hidden and in its place appear to us merely relations between things, those things generally being the money in our pocket and the product on that shelf. Marxism also includes his theory of alienation, which describes the various ways that working people become alienated, that is, separated or detached, through the process of capitalist production, particularly in how the products of a worker's labour don't belong to the worker themselves, but instead belong to the capitalist who pays that worker's wage or salary. Now, these are all massive oversimplifications, but don't worry because we're going to dive into each one in much greater detail over the next few videos. Importantly, all of these Marxist concepts coalesce and reveal to us the unsustainable nature of capitalism from a thorough analysis of class society in its totality. And not only do they diagnose the problems, they also provide the solution to resolve the contradictions inherent to capitalism. Today we've looked at the key components of Marxism. We've gone directly to its core by touching on dialectical materialism and its application to socio-historical development, historical materialism. We've briefly dipped our toes into the waters of the Marxist law of value, basin superstructure, commodity fetishism and Marxist theory of alienation, and we've set the backdrop for studying these Marxist concepts and more in greater depth in the upcoming videos. One last thing, it should also be pointed out that Marxism is a developing scientific theory. Since the time of Marx's writing, it's been greatly built upon, developed and expanded through the rich experiences of real-world class struggle. World historical socialist revolutions have led to qualitative leaps forward in Marxist theory. In light of Russia's Bolshevik revolution, it progressed from Marxism to Marxism-Leninism. And in light of the Chinese revolution, it progressed from Marxism-Leninism to Marxism-Leninism-Maoism. But what do each of these theoretical developments entail? Well, those are topics for more advanced parts of this series. But for now, it'll suffice to say that Marxism is not something that's stuck in the 1800s, or even the 1900s but is instead a theoretical method that's always growing by learning from its failures and building upon its successes, right up to this very day. Next up, we're going to dive back into dialectics and deepen our understanding of historical materialism. Thank you for watching this video, hopefully you found it useful in one way or another. I am struggling financially at the moment, so if you're able to, then please consider donating a euro or a dollar per month over on Patreon or a once-off donation over on Ko-fi. Links in the description box below. Thank you to Rare Hero, Cormac O'Brien, Dan Hunter, Christian Nepalis, Daniel H, MLM in Practice, Jason, Michaela Schmid, Mamarius Hex, Ryan Hodgson, Don Lokwishleva, Lepanion, Hugh Das, The Runway Condition, Jess, Ian McShay, Soup, Hagen Mitchells, Evan Crossland, and Borka Gorilla. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you. Cheers everyone, August Longfoe.